So tapeworms are specialists in proliferation and this is what makes them so dangerous that they can metastasize and spread throughout the body and the reason they can do that are their amazing stem cells. So I will show you a little video which is really made of sponges but try to imagine that this is a tapeworm instead or indeed try to imagine that this is a nematode or maybe a fruit fly or a sweet corn or something like that. They take that little bit and they push it into a sieve and what comes out on the other hand would this be a fruit fly or a nematode or a sweet corn it would just be mush. But as you can see for the sponge this is not really, not really a problem they can survive this because they have uh, the stem cells which keeps proliferating and the cells start to aggregate and build bigger and bigger lumps and tapeworm cysts they can do exactly the same if you push them through a sieve they will re-aggregate and grow into new cysts and this is what makes them so dangerous in order to understand better how these stem cells can proliferate, we looked at a set of stem cell specific genes. First of all, we looked at the gene VASA, which is a classic stem cell marker which you find in the first cells of the embryo. We looked at all the dead box helicases and we found that many families are well conserved between both tapeworms, humans, and even yeast. But with VASA, and it's closely related PL10, it's different. Most animals, if you knock out Vasa, they will die or they will be infertile. But tapeworms are actually completely missing a Vasa and instead it has two copies of PL10. Another look we had at stem cell specific genes is the Argonaut gene families. These are involved in RNA interference by binding microRNAs and PRNAs, amongst other exotic RNA species. What we've seen here is that tapeworms and flukes are missing completely the PV gene family and also PV interacting Tudor domain containing proteins. While instead they have gained a completely new clade which is exclusive to tapeworms and it's different from the group that is exclusive to C. elegans. Finally, if we look at the development beyond just the first embryo, we look at homeobox genes. These are high level transcription factors which decide where the front and the end of an animal is, which is the upside, the downside, uh, and it decides where different organs go. What we see is that tapeworms have a, an astonishing loss of homeobox genes and this has persisted throughout their whole clade, even from free-living flatworms. If we're trying to understand which genes have been lost, you have a few which has to do with gut development and a few other ones which are lost exclusively in tapeworms have to do with the development of the neuronal system.